I am, good morning. Hello, we're live. Hello, um, I am the resident tummy tickler. Boo, can you just sort of look at the camera? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, actually, what she's looking for is this. Look at the camera, eat the treats. Now, okay, off now, off now, Booey. Go on, you're gonna, we need to make sure we don't have a microphone kerfuffle today. Go on, off you go. There we go. Oh, sorry, did that make a noise? <sighs> Here we are, folks. Good morning. It's a bit snowy outside again. I thought it wasn't going to be, but now it's all changed and now it might be. So, slightly concerned that we might get snowed in. What do you think, Chris? I think it's very unlikely we're okay. going to get snowed in. Well, if we do, I have got a four pack of hot cross buns. So, um, oh, really? We'll be fine for at least a couple of hours. <laughs> Jolly good. <laughs> I don't think a hot cross bun's going to last me that long. Or Betty. Or Betty, I have got a pack of tr treats. Are we on? Are we live? <laughs> I just heard you swear. Did anyone else hear you swear? They didn't hear me swear, <laughs> but I'd forgotten to push a button. Okay, so we are we... are live now, I think. Okay. Yeah, we're live. What, everywhere? Shall I play the titles again? No, please don't play the titles again. Oh, Are we live everywhere? I think so. I hope so. Okay. Oh no, look. Okay, I was worried this was going to happen. So basically, this week, Chris has been working on sound effects. Don't ask me why, but I do know he has a whole bank of them and I've told him not to overdo it. But he might have to get them out of his system, so... I apologise in yes, advance. Master. No, stop it, please. So I apologise in advance for over, over sound affected scenarios. Anyway, anyway, we're here to make Mexican hanging hearts. Come sa. Okay. Um, if you've got our new kit ta -da, behind me, then uh, bravo. I think we've got a three left or something as I speak. Um, we will have more, so don't worry if you're watching this like next week and you still need to get one. Hoping we will have more at some point next week. Basically, some of the contents come from Europe and now we've Brexited. It's all a bit of a nightmare. Um, and some of our items have had a bit of a tormented journey <laughs> that have, have arrived, but some haven't arrived. Anyway, boring, boring, boring. Um, yeah, so if, if they're out of stock, they'll be back very soon and you just need to fill in the box next to the item saying, email me when back in stock, because it's coming, okay. Anyway, I have done one of these tutorials before. Oh, one, one thing, sorry, getting ahead of myself. One thing I also wanted to say was I am wearing my Gertrude cardigan knitted in birdhouse in your soul, kids silk mohair lace. And we do have some more dyed up. As I, if you're watching this in a couple of weeks, it might have all sold out. But I just wanted to just point that out before I started. Okay, so yeah, I have done a, um, a Mexican Hearts tutorial before. Um, probably, I think it was about six months ago now, because I was looking back at it and I was wearing a short sleeve top, so it was obviously hot. And of course, it was in my old studio. And we weren't quite so professional, were we, Christopher? No, Master. <laughs> um, so I just thought, let's do it again, because we've got the new kit because I love making them and because it's Valentine's Day next weekend. Okay. Can, can, can somebody just message and say that we're all in sync and it's all fabulous and working properly oh, after okay. my slight cock up at uh, the beginning? Oh, okay. I'm sure it is, but... 
If anyone's watching, can you just please tell Christopher, can you reassure him that all his electronics are working, all his gadgetry and his, you know, connections and his encoder. Did you reboot the encoder? I did indeed reboot the encoder. That was what caused the lip sync issues last week. It wasn't See? last oh, week, it was the week before. The week before. Yeah, we knew that. Anyway, let's crack on with the old hearts, shall we? So what you get in your kit, okay, is loads of felt. You get six pieces that are 23 centimetres by 30 centimetres, something like that. So you get way more than you need. So you can actually make more than the four that you can make from the kit. So, well, you can make four from the kit because there's four tassels in the kit. But I'm going to show you how to make way more than that because lots and lots of felt. You get all of your colours of yarn, okay, to make the, to do the embroidery with. Plus, you can make extra tassels with it. We'll come into that later. Um, you get a pack of yarn darners, my favourite needles, uh, for doing your embroidery with. What else do you get? And you get some stuffing, okay? You get some stuffing, not quite that much. But you do get some stuffing uh, to pad them out with. And then you get your tassels. You get four neon tassels. You get two that are sort of coral coloured and two that are pink. So lots and lots of possibilities. Okay, so the first thing is that I want to say it does come with full instructions, the kit. Okay, so you, you can do it without this, but I think it's quite handy to see, isn't it, some of these things. Um, and, and, and the instructions do also come with a template that you can trace over and use to cut out your hearts. However, I do want to show you how to cut out hearts without a template because it is super easy, okay? Um, what you need to start off by doing is just cutting out some squares. Um, I've made them about 10 centimetres by 11 centimetres, okay? And then all you do is you just fold them in half like this. And then I'm going to show you, if we cut to the overhead camera, Chris, please. Yes, master. <laughs> oh my God, here we go. Um, then, uh, oh, let's <laughs> put me off now. So we're gonna go from the bottom corner, okay? Let me just move these other things out of the way so you can properly see what I'm doing. And then hopefully we're in the right spot on Instagram. I'm gonna head over to about halfway <clears throat> down at the side here, okay? And I'm just going to curve it round. All right, that's the bottom of your heart. Oh, that's the bottom of your heart, okay? And then, obviously, you don't want, really want a straight hit bit here, but you're not really going to see that because you're going, then going to curve round the top like this, and then you're going to make the V, okay? So it's actually really simple to cut a heart Ta -da! without a template. That's what I want to show you, okay? I'll do it one more time so that you can see again. So 10 by 11 or 11 by 11, it doesn't really matter. I like them slightly wider than I do long, but hey, that's just personal preference. Uh, so cutting from this corner, then I'm heading to about halfway down the side here is where I'm heading towards. And it's pretty much a straight line, okay? But right at the end, I just curve it round, okay? And then I'm just going to literally just curve round and cut the corner off to the top. And then I'm just going to bring it down and into the V. And actually that line there sort of mirrors this line here, okay? And then, ta-da, there's your heart, okay? So now moving swiftly on to the fun embroidery, Brit, em embroidery bits. Now last week I was showing you bullion stitch, I know. This week I'm gonna show you again, okay? Nobody ever told us why it's called bullion stitch, by the way. Oh no, no Nobody one told, told us why it's called bullion stitch and there I forgot go. to look it up because I've had a busy week. Oh well. Sorry. Moving anyway, on. moving swiftly on. You could have done that, Christopher, couldn't you? I could have. But you didn't. I didn't. Okay, so uh, I know I showed you that last week, bullion stitch, but I, I was using embroidery threads last week. This week, what comes in the kit, and so what I'm going to be using is the cotton yarn like this okay um, it's a double knit cotton yarn so it's slightly fatter which makes for a very pleasing bullion stitch let me tell you okay so what I'm going to start off by doing is uh, the center of the rows now in terms of color it very much depends which color you've chosen so on the yellow I didn't use yellow for my very center color I used orange then red then pink 
Uh, but on the other ones, I did start with the yellow and then I used red and pink on this one. And on this one, I started with yellow, then I used orange and pink. So you've got the whole pack, so you can choose whichever color you like, but obviously it makes sense to start with yellow in the middle if you want to. Um, I'm just going to work onto blue because I thought it would show up nicely. Let's choose one that's not slightly, yeah, let's choose that one. Okay, that other one was slightly crooked. Uh, all right, so if we can go to the overhead, Chris, so I can explain how we're going to work this out. So we're going to start off by just deciding where the exact center of the heart is, because that's where you need to make your first stitches. Let me choose one that isn't the same color. Right, so where we're going to be putting these yellow stitches is where we're, we're deciding first of all. So you want pretty much bang in the center of the heart okay and actually here's a little pink one that I've been doing already because I was going to show you French knots in a little while as well so working on the blue here what we're going to do is we're going to come up let's just say there for argument's sake I've knotted the end of my uh, yarn okay and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down again pretty much in exactly the same place and up a stitch length length away okay like that do you want to zoom right in actually Chris please now please thank you so to about there okay um, just going to push the needle right up and what we want to do is we want to kind of create a stitch that's about this length the length that the needle is at the back okay now we do this by wrapping the yarn around the needle but what I was talking to you about last week and what I want to talk to you about the same this week is which way to wrap it around. So one way you'll get a far more defined sort of wrap than if you wrap it the other way. Wrapping it this way kind of separates the stitch, uh, separates the yarn because of the way that it's been um, spun or wound. Okay, Wrapping it the other way, going right to left in this instance, is giving me a far more, oops, sorry, I've gone off the centre a bit, far more sort of defined um, wrap around the needle, if you can see that. So it actually looks much nicer when it's finished. Now, I tend to do between 9 and 12 wraps-ish, okay? Don't wrap them around too tightly, okay? So you want a nice loose wrap. And you want the amount of wraps to mirror this length that you've, you've put the needle behind, okay? So I'm now going to pull this uh, needle through. And the reason for using this yarn on a needle, I'll talk to you about in a second. I'm just going to pull it upwards, okay? So let me get it in the right place. Pulling it upwards, keeping all my little coils around there like that, okay? And then you can see there's my first stitch. Okay, there's my first bullion stitch okay then I'm going to anchor it back down again if you can hear a funny noise in the background it's the dog licking her I'm gonna say bum because she is <laughs> you didn't need to say that Gillian, <laughs> Gillian you didn't need no, to say I know that I didn't uh, well I thought should I say she's licking her leg no she is not right okay so um, there's your first bullion stitch okay then I'm going to come up pretty much right next to the first one and do my second one but I'm going to make my second one a little bit shorter okay so I've come up and I'm going to go down in pretty much the same place but I'm just going to make it a little bit shorter this one okay bring my, my needle up again then I'm going to coil around again I'm going to go right to left and I'm going to judge probably five six seven eight nine I'm going to make this slightly longer than the stitch needs to be because I want it to curl a little bit and I'll show you what I mean. So the reason I like using the yarn darner is because the eye of the yarn darner isn't much wider than the body of the needle. So when it's going through all of these little loops here, it slides through quite easily. If you had a needle where this, this eye of the needle was much bigger, that would be much more difficult. So when you're using embroidery cottons and much finer yar um, yarns, you could use a smaller milliner's needle or something like that. But the yarn darner works well for yarn. Okay, so I'm just going to bring it through all of my loops, okay, like that, and then always pull it up in the air as you go, pulling it upwards and tightening it, and I'm just getting hold of them and then making sure they're nice and even and flat, 
And you can see how that's curled round slightly. And then I'm going to anchor it down around about there. Okay. Like so. Okay. And then I'm just going to do one more. I tend to do three in the centre for the centre of the flower. Why do I do three? Oh, here I've done four here. Depends. But what you don't want is you don't want it to look like you've got three little worms all sitting next to one another. You want it to make, make it slightly rounded, okay? So what I might do now is I think I might do one going the other way. I'm going to start sort of here, okay? And now I'm going to go back in again, and then I'm going to come down to about there, I think, is my plan for this one, okay? And now this is such a pleasing stitch to do. It really is. Um, once you get the hang of it and you're not feeling stressed out about it and you remember you need to breathe, uh, it's breathe. really, you have yes, to breathe as well. you do. It's quite important to breathe. Um, so again, mirroring this stitch length here with the number of loops. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's go with nine. Okay. And then I'm just going to push those through my loops. I'm holding on to my loops. There they are. Okay. I'm holding on to them just gently. Well, I pull the, the yarn all the way through and then I'm just going to pull it up in the air, okay? I'm going to slide all my little loops down and I'm going to bring them round and I'm just going to tighten that off. And I'm going to anchor it back down over here. I love that word, anchor. Anchoring it down there, all right? So there we go. Actually, do you know what? I think it needs a fourth. Sorry to bore you all, but I'm just going to do a fourth one. Get in the right place. So, um, oh, she's still licking. Betty, please, we're on air. Give it a break. Okay, so I'm just going to go from there to there, okay? And then wrapping once, wrapping twice, three, four, five, six. And can you see, I just do it on autopilot now, but I use my other thumbnail there just to hold them in place. Am I in the right place? Yeah. Hold them in place while I'm doing this, okay? So let's go with another, another one for luck. There we go. And then I'm just going to pull them all through again. I'm going to bring my thread upwards and round. I'm going to tighten them, not tighten them. I'm just going to make sure they're all sitting neatly. And then I'm going to anchor it back down here. All right, there we go. So there's my center of my rows. Then I am just going to go to the back and I'm just going to secure that neatly. I'm trying to be as neat as I can on the back so I always make such a mess, I know. Let me cut the tail of my knot off. There we go. I'm trying to keep it nice and neat on the back. Okay, so next I'm going to use orange. So I'm going to get my orange yarn, my orange cotton yarn. Oh, we might need a bit, a bit longer than that. It does use up the length of the yarn, so don't cut off pieces that are too short. Um, I'm just going to snip that off there, and then I'm going to show you again my rather splendid um, embroidery yarn needle threader, which is absolutely indispensable, in my opinion, uh, because it just makes it so much easier. Just pop it through the eye of the needle, pop your yarn through there, and then, hey presto, Bob's your auntie's uncle, there you go, we've threaded the needle live on the telly and everything. Then we're going to tie a little knot in the other end, just the one will suffice. And then we're going to start doing this second layer of stitches. Let me choose one with a slightly different colour. Second layer of stitches. So now I'm doing the equivalent of the orange on here, okay, around here. So each time you do a stitch, you kind of want to overlap the previous stitch. So it starts to look like petals. That's the plan. Okay, Stan. All right, so we're going to go in here this time. And then I think I want it to try and curl it round a little bit uh, to sort of over here is what I'm thinking. So again, push the needle through. Have we got any questions, Christopher? Well, I'm... There's a comment. A comment? Yeah. Is it a Leslie, good comment? Leslie Cruden on <laughs> Facebook says that this is also worth called a worm stitch. Oh, is it? Because they look like worms. Yeah. yeah, I can see that. They do. Or caterpillars. They look a little bit like caterpillars. Right, okay. So, again, up in the air. Has, has anyone found out why it's called bullion stitch, though? No. Oh. I might look it up. I'm just going to nip outside and look it up for you. N nip, nip outside what? So you're... To your library full of encyclopedias. Yeah, yeah. It could take a little <laughs> while, but I'll, I'll do my best. Hold okay, on a so there's my orange one. <laughs> you haven't got a sound effect for, 
for crunching through the snow to your, your I, I haven't. encyclopedia no. library oh. right then i'm going i'm going to come up here now and now what i don't want to do is mirror this stitch here so i'm going to go and try and go past it and see if we can do a great mammoth one a mammoth worm okay so i'm going to go over to here it's quite a long way isn't it you know jeopardy living on the edge let's do a really long bullion stitch okay one two <laughs> Three, four. Where's everyone tuning in from this morning then? Five. Uh, we've we've got a New Zealander. <gasps> Crikey. Winnie Six. Kelly in New Zealand. Wow. We do have a question from Tina Tintsy. Yes, go on then. Seven, <laughs> Tina eight. Tina Tintsy Wincy Cross. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yes. Where did you get your lovely needle threader? We sell them, Tina. Come on. <laughs> We do sell them. Oh, crikey, what's fallen down? Something's fallen down off your set, uh -oh. Christopher. Uh-oh. Uh, right, I'm just going to carry on with this stitch regardless. It frightened the dog. She's run off. It's all gone horribly wrong. Uh, but my stitch is just about hanging in there. <laughs> there we go. Yes, these are great. Look, it comes like this. It's, it comes like this, okay. Um, not the cheapest thing, but crikey, it's been jolly handy, I must say. All right. So what's the weather like in uh, in New Zealand? I bet it's lovely, isn't it? I can't see from here. No, I can't imagine it's snowing, that's for sure. Right, okay, so there's my long stitch that's gone around there. And then what I think I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring one round the top, just one of the orange around the top, okay? But I'm only going to take make it short because I want to overlap them a bit more and make it look a bit more flowery. And I don't want them all lined up in a row like soldiers. So I'm just going to wrap this round and do a short one and pull those through there. Okay, so again, up in the air to tighten it. There we go. There's, that's the ticket. And then, am I in the right place? I slid off slightly to the right, sorry. Yep, and then, you're fine. And then down again and so on and so forth. Let me do one more for you. I won't bore you with the whole thing, but you get the general idea. In fact, I'm running a bit low on thread now, so this might be a, quite a short one. Um, oh, let's do Jeopardy again. I love a bit of Jeopardy. Chris likes a bit of Jeopardy when he empties the dishwasher, don't you? One, I don't know two, what you mean. Three, four, five. Hang on, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Will she make it? Will she make it? Uh, you know, when you empty the dishwasher with my mugs, all my cherished mugs that I love so dearly. Um, when, it, when Chris empties the dishwasher, they're always precariously balanced, um, like, you know, on one leg sort of thing, if, if a mug can be on one leg, um, ne like bashing into each other. I always say that's just, yes, okay, oh, God, <laughs> no, stop. Apparently it's 22 degrees in, um, in, New Zealand. in New Zealand. Is it? Lucky you. Enjoy. That's more my kind of weather. All right, so you can see where we're going with this. I'm just going to move on now to this one here where I've added, it's difficult to see it, but I've added a red layer here around the bottom. So you can see really the, the, idea, the idea is to keep overlapping these stitches, okay? So don't do them all one, next to one another and build it up downwards. Let me show you one that isn't the same colour. And build it up as it's going downwards, okay? So that it ends up with the centre of the flower, not bang in the middle, but sort of more up to the top right, yeah? And then more of your stitches coming around, a bit like it's a rose, okay? All right, so let's move on to this one here, uh, where I've been doing the French knots, and I am going to use my rather nifty needle threader yet again. You just can't stop using it, can you? I can't stop using it. <laughs> no. Well, I tend to only use it when I need to thread it, but you know. Oh, okay. Okay, so I'm just going to pop the yellow through the hole in the middle, like that. Ooh, like that and then swing that off onto there pull that out through there and hey press it's a miracle it is a miracle oh now come back to me a sec chris now the other thing i forgot to say at the beginning was if you prefer before you cut the heart out 
you could put the whole piece of felt, I've got one big enough here, into um, a hoop, that's the word. I was thinking, God, what is it called? <laughs> a hoop, not a tricky word to remember. Uh, you could put the whole thing into a hoop and we sell the hoop separately. And we also sell a table clamp so that you could be hands-free. Because I think... Ha hand, sorry, hands-free. Hands-free when you're embroidering. What, like it's Bluetooth or something? No, 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 no. Sorry, I really need to blow my nose. Please excuse me while oh, I just think. I need to cut to something else. Oh, no, don't. It's fine. It's we don't it's want fine. to be putting that... Over. Maybe I need to cover it's the noise a, up. Here no, we go. it's a polite... I'm not... I'm, I'm not, going to cover the noise no, up it's for you. It's a polite... Here we, here we go. I needed to get that in there somewhere. <laughs> anyway, sorry. What was the... <laughs> No, not hands-free like Bluetooth. Hands-free as in it's attached to the hoop on the table and you can use both. I don't mean hands-free. I mean, you can use both hands to embroider. So you can use your other hand to hold the stitches. And actually, when you're doing a French knot, which is what I'm coming on to now, it's actually much easier to do that if you've got both hands to do it with. But I'm going to show you how to do it with one hand, you know, because we like a bit of jeopardy. OK, so back to the overhead again. Paul Favreau. Allow okay. me, master. <laughs> Okay, so I'm now going to show you how to do a French knot because I just think these look so pretty just dotted around your little heart and it just adds a little certain je ne sais quoi. Okay, so we're going to come up where you'd like the knot to be. Okay, it's very easy, a French knot. Oh, not when you, not when you accidentally make a knot and the way you, up. And, okay. and when you say you come up exactly where you not, where you not need Anyway, not, anyway, anyway, and then on. what you're going to do is you're going to hold your yarn taut, okay, you're going to wrap it around twice, and then whilst you're holding it taut, you're going to poke it back through in almost the same place. You can see why it's handy to have two hands, and then pull it through while you're holding it taut, and then you pull it tight, okay. So it's perfectly I, I, feasible to do that. You need, you need to do that food. again in the middle on yes. a close up. Okay, all right, all right, it's perfectly okay, feasible so. to do this without a hoop but easier with a hoop okay so i'm going to show you again so we're going to come up where you want the knot to be okay and then we're going to wrap the yarn around your needle a couple of times holding it taut i think this is key to this stitch and then pushing it back through and then whilst holding it taut as taut as you can pull it tight and there's your little French knot, okay? So that's super easy as well, but I think it's just nice to have them dotted around. Really, really straightforward. I'll just do it one more time, <clears throat> although I don't have much thread left, to be honest. Let's see if we can do it. One more, okay, a bit more jeopardy this morning. So holding it taut, like so, okay? Haven't got much of an end left, but let's do it anyway. Wrapping it around a couple of times. And then you're going to go back through the, the same place-ish, okay? But again, holding this taut and then like so. All right, okay, there is your French knots. All right, so that's that. Now what we're going to do, actually, I kind of want to do one more because I kind of um, want to search together. I've come together. back to you now. Oh, hello. Smile at the camera. Hello. <laughs> Why I was smiling, back? actually. But, you were. It's quite um, unusual. I beg your pardon. Nothing. That's very rude. Nothing. Nothing. I'm just going to finish the back off and then I'm going to talk to you about what happens next. I'll do the last French knot later. So what I want to say is, obviously, it goes without saying that all of this needs to be done before you sew the two halves of the heart together. Obviously, that I didn't need to say that because it's obvious. All right, so if you're going to use this, oh, let's find a matching one that's the same size, shall we? If you're going <laughs> to, I think it is. If you're going to use um, a different colour for the back, that's what I normally do, okay? The next thing to do is to sew them together using blanket stitch favorite stitch it's very pleasing to do if you've never done it before i mean you could you could do a running stitch you could just do an over stitch but a blanket stitch um so i'm going to show you how to do that now but what we're going to do just so you know is we're going to start and go around sort of two thirds three quarters of the way and then we're going to stuff it with a bit of stuffing and then we're going to finish it off 
So I'm just going to start off a blanket stitch and then I've actually got one that's nearly done over there. But let me start one off. So the thing about blanket stitch is that it uses up way, 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 way more yarn than you think it's going to. All right. So always cut off a length that you is longer than you think you'll need. Obviously, you're going to need to knot one end of it again. And then you are going to need to thread the other end through the needle again, funnily enough. So I'm just going to use my little friend one more time. Um, what was I going to say about this? I can't remember. Oh, yes, you need to hide your knot. So I'm going to show you how to hide your knot from your blanket stitch in the middle of your heart. OK, let's just do this quickly. Thankfully, it's quite quick, that, because you wouldn't want to sit watching me throw the needle, would you? That would be very dull. Do we have any questions before I continue? Uh, no, Master. No, no Master. All right. But so I would like to say that we are halfway through, so you need to put okay, your foot all right, down. Okay, all right, okay, okay. If you cut to the overhead then, please, darling. Okay, I was expecting a yes, Master. Okay, so then I'm going to just go in where I want to start my blanket stitch, but I'm only going through the top piece, not the bottom piece. Okay, there we go, like that. I'm going to pull it all the way through and there's my little tail and I'm going to just tuck my tail in so we can't see the tail. I know it's very clever I always stuff. do that. What, you tuck your tail in? Oh yeah. All right, so then I'm going round to the back and I'm going to come up about there, okay. I'm going to pull my yarn through um, but before I get right to the end I'm going to thread my needle through the loop. And that's going to pull it over to one side. And we're going to sort that out when we get to the end and finish it off straight. OK. All right. So I'm going to do that again now. And what, what, I'm, what you need to do now is just judge how far apart these stitches are and try and make them pretty much equidistant. OK. So again, I'm going to come up there. Before I get to the end, I'm just going to put my needle through the loop. And pull it tight oh look at that folks look at that very very pleasing blanket stitch if ever you did see a pleasing stitch who agrees who agrees blanket stitch is the business i mean i love a bullion i love an, a french knot but in terms of pleasing surely this look because you pull it tight and it's just oh yes okay and then so again about there I would say so try and keep them nice and even stitch length away get to the there with your little loop okay through there sorry my little heart on the table tells me where the middle of the um, camera shot is especially for Instagram because it's quite tight because it's portrait on Instagram and then pulling it tight like so and you can see the pattern is forming okay I'll just do another couple for you because I don't want to bore you with this but this is how you do Blanket stitch. All right. Okay. I learned that at school. Did you, darling? Blanket stitch. Why have you never stitched me anything with blanket stitch then? I kind of got over it at that point. <laughs> well, that's good that you learned it at school. It's very useful. It's a good, strong stitch. And it's also a good looking stitch. Oh my goodness, it's a good looking stitch. All right. So there we go. There's blanket stitch. And obviously, when you get to the end and you do your final stitch over here, then you just catch this on the last stitch and you pull it straight. So you don't actually see a join and it's perfect all the way around. Okay. Um, but then, yeah, when you get three quarters of the way around, you're going to get some of your little stuffing. You're going to stuff it in. Okay. And when it's nice and puffy, then you just finish it off at the side. Okay. And then we get to here. Now, the other thing that you can do is create yourself a little loop using the same yarn that you've used to do the blanket stitch with. Just cut off a bit, tie a knot in it, and just loop it through one of the stitches. Okay, so that's what you can hang it up by. But now let me quickly move on to the old tassels. Okay, so tassels. Back to me, please, sweetheart. Allow me, master. <laughs> oh, just to say that, that uh, Tara Cannon, bullion stitch, because it looks like pearl and bullion. Coils oh. of gold or silver wire used oh. in military clothing. Oh, well, there you are. She, ah. did, she did look it up on the internet ah. and that. Did you go into your room 
your special room full of dictionaries. Not dictionaries, encyclopedias. Look it up. So that's interesting. Yeah, gold and silver on military uniforms. I kind of know what they mean by that, actually, don't you? Interesting. Thank you. Um, the kit comes with four tassels, like I mentioned. Um, the tassels are ready made. All you need to do is snip here and tie it on the bottom. Okay, it's as simple as that. And then you're kind of done and it's made. However, as I mentioned before, in this kit, there are a, there's a lot of felt and there's a lot of yarn. So why not make some more? The, and actually, you've probably got enough stuffing to make some more. If not, just use a bit of old wool, wool tops, yarn, whatever. Um, but yeah, there's loads more. So you might as well make some more. So I'm quickly going to run through how to make a tassel from the extra yarn. So here's one I made earlier, just using the green cotton. OK, so let's just do one using pink, shall we? What you need for this is a very high tech piece of equipment called a piece of cardboard. <laughs> Actually, you can use anything for this. It just needs to be like a square or a rectangle, roughly the length you want the tassel to be. That's it. Uh, but a piece of cardboard is fine, okay? Uh, it doesn't really matter where it's come from. It just any, needs to be any particular colour? Pardon? Any particular colour? Colour? What, yeah. cardboard? Yeah. No. Oh. It could be anything. All right. Any bit of cardboard, just quite that firm. That was my question. Quite firm I was, cardboard. I was just, you don't I was want just a trying flimsy. To, yeah, I was just trying to help. You don't want a flimsy cardboard. <laughs> you just want to... Anyway. All right. So then I'm just going to take my pink. And this is how you make a tassel. It's not complicated. You don't need a special tassel maker, believe me. You want to start off... Actually, you don't want to go through the overhead shop, please. Again, my love. Start off with a piece that is roughly the length of the cardboard because this it's going to form one of your what's what's an individual piece of a tassel called? It's a going tass. To, a tass. It's going to form a tass. <laughs> okay, um, and then you're going to wrap it around. Now, the more you wrap, the fatter your tassel will be. The less you wrap, the skinnier your tassel will be. I would recommend wrapping. I don't know, probably a minimum of twenty times. But just let's you know, let's just go with that and sort of, you know, judge it by eye. You don't want a too skinnier tassel, I would say. You want a fairly fat tassel. So depending on your yarn. I've always thought that. Yeah. Have you though? Yeah, I've always preferred a fat <laughs> tassel to some skinny thing. Same. <laughs> like who would want a skinny tassel? Nobody, nobody. Joking apart. All right, and then when I finish off here, I'm actually going to cut it a tassel, a tass. <laughs> the length of a tass. There we go. All right, so, so far, so good. Wrapped around a piece of cardboard, okay? Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off a bit of yarn to tie it at the top. I'm simply going to thread this underneath, and then I'm going to bring it up to the top. I'm going to make it even, and then I'm going to tie a double knot. I don't know why, but I feel like talking like... I'm going to tie a double knot. Is there a specific <laughs> double knot one would tie? <laughs> That's Christopher's impression of the Queen, just in case anyone was wondering. Uh, no, I'm going to be tying a granny knot. Okay, yeah. all right. So, so that is also potentially going to form your hanging loop. All right. Now, at this point, one can cut one's tassel off or one can slide it off. I'm actually going to slide it off, which is what I did earlier. Slide one's tassel off one's cardboard, discard one's cardboard, okay? Well, not completely discard it, because you'll probably want to use it again. And then snip, or you can do this later if you want, it doesn't really matter, but it starts to look a little bit more exciting if you snip it now. Okay, then we're going to take probably about, I don't know, how much, 12 inches or so, another piece, okay? And this, is going to form the top of the tassel. So I would start off by, by tying around a knot about, let's go with there, because you want one end of it to form a tass. <laughs> and I know you all know what I mean by that. Also, you have to determine how big you want the head of the tassel to be. I'm gonna call that the head, because that looks like the head, doesn't it? And again, do a double knot, 
I mean, you know, you could probably do a better knot than that, but I'm, you know, let's not, let's not get into knots right now. And then the shorter bit, you want to be a tass. I'm just gonna make it, actually, let's do that later. First of all, what I want to do is I'm going to now make this look terribly attractive by wrapping the, oh, sorry, I'm on the right place, wrapping this neatly, neatly around here, okay. Now, the ones that are included in the kit, I was looking at these earlier, it's, you know, I mean, depends how neat you want it. You probably want to hide that knot, okay, because no one wants to see a knot, do they? Mm, I quite like a knot. Do you, darling? Yeah. Mm, okay. As long as it's a good knot. I mean, ideally, really, we'd want another tass here, wouldn't we? But, you know, I've gone a little bit short to have another tass there. Anyway, I'm going to do another knot there. And then I'm going to re-trim my tassel. All right. And so what I'd probably do in this instance is probably just snip that short and then actually get a crochet hook or something and tie that underneath, just get it out of the way. And then just do a retrim with a nice sharp pair of scissors. That's what you need, believe me. There's nothing more pleasing than a nice sharp pair of scissors and there's nothing more irritating than an, a, a blunt pair of scissors, okay. So there we go, a homemade tassel. Obviously the ones that are included in the kit are wool, but the extra ones you could make would be made of cotton, would look perfectly fine and would actually match, you know, what you've done before, okay. So there's your homemade tassel. So bearing that in mind, you could actually make quite a few more out of this. You could probably make double the amount, I would say. You might have to add a little bit of your own stuffing, but you could make plenty. Um, now, I believe that the Mexicans, obviously these feature heavily in Mexican folk art, these kinds of hearts, all sorts of hearts. What's Spanish for heart? Is it Carazon, Corazon, something like that? Um, and it, they symbolize love, healing and gratitude, which I think is really lovely, uh, especially in the times we are currently living in. So um, not only is it Valentine's Day next Sunday, which I know is a hugely hyped commercial thing, but I think it's nice to make something for somebody that you care about, or that you love, whether they're your partner or not. It could be some, you know, a friend that's helped you or whatever and um, that you're grateful for. And I just think these make really lovely little gifts or to give at any time of the year to be honest so i am obsessed with mexican art mexican folk, folk art i absolutely love it and this is my take on their mexican hearts um a number of which did come home with me when i was there so um i hope you enjoy making them as well but there we go that's that now then now then now then in terms of what's coming next, well, we're actually going to be taking a week off. I know. Yay. How very dare we. I mean, oh, I don't mean, yeah. Just I because mean, uh... we've been doing these every weekend uh, since the new year. And we've pretty much been doing them every week since last March when we've got locked down. And we will carry on, but we're just going to have one week off because I just feel like I need to regroup and make some plans of what I'm going to do next and come up with some new ideas, some of which are in my head, but I need to actually make the things. Will, will, will they involve our, our, our special glue? Oh, yes. Jam tack <laughs> oh, God, for been... all your sticky needs. I've been desperate to play that. Here we go, here's the gem tack. I'll <laughs> make sure that some of them do involve... Oh, gem Sorry, I was reading a message. for all your sticky needs. Anyway, uh, yeah, I'm sure some of them will involve that. But yes, I need to actually make some things and, and, and then I will announce on social media what's coming next. In the meantime, though, I've got a very exciting giveaway, which is actually... Oh, what hang did on. you say? <laughs> I've got a very exciting... Giveaway. Giveaway. you have a little choir of Christopher's in the back there all singing took, with you? It took us weeks to put that together. 
Anyway, uh, this giveaway ends tomorrow, actually. So if you're watching this in a few weeks' time or a few years' time, it's too late. But if you're watching it today, now live or later, you can still enter. You need to go over to our Instagram page or our Facebook page. There's a picture of these um, circular needles. I'm going to take it out of the packet. Uh, there's a circular needle set of three chunky knitting needles, circular needles, interchangeable. That's the word I'm looking for. Interchangeable set. You need to follow our page, like the picture, say why you want to win them, and then tag someone else who might like to win them as well below. And then we're going to pick the winner tomorrow, which is Monday. Yeah. It's been very busy all week. Yeah. Getting his choir Christmas to, go, to sing the giveaway. I'm, I'm just trying to get it There's in as many times soprano. as I can. Is it called falsetto when um, um, when a young man goes really high with his voice? Is that falsetto? Something like that, yeah. Or soprano. Anyway, yeah. there's falsetto. one in there. He's very high. I, do, I don't want to go into how I got that note. Ooh. Anyway, so that's going on. And, and then obviously it may snow. We may all be snowed in any way. I'll be very thin the next time you see me because I'll have only eaten a hot cross bun because um, that's all we have here and um, I probably won't actually <laughs> it'll be very thin next time you see me but I will see you no so not next Sunday but the Sunday after for whatever we're going to be doing next and believe me it will be lovely because isn't it always any more questions before we go um, Valerie Waters on Facebook said uh, do you embroider the hearts at the back as well no I don't because I sort of think well probably going to hang them up against something. You could do though, couldn't you? You absolutely could. Of course you could. But Valerie, for me... I would if I was you. For me, I'm I probably would. just going to hang them somewhere where you won't see the back. I like to hang them on door handles or just around random things in the house, don't I, Chris? You do. Um, so yeah, obviously you could re you could embroider the back as well, yes. Val was it Valerie? Valerie. Valerie, Valerie. yes. Yeah. Valerie, you could embroider the back as well. Why not? Any more for any more? Uh, Louise on Instagram thinks I should have my own show. Oh my lord, don't say that. The whole thing would just consist of lots of sound effects. <laughs> anyway, well, I mean, maybe... <laughs> maybe you should feature on this show a bit more, Christopher. Well... Mind you, who would press all the buttons? Yeah, really. Yeah, that's true, actually. Anyway, well, we'll see what we can do. Perhaps we could do a pre-record and play you in. Uh, yeah, why not? Uh. Anyway, okay, I'm going to go now because it's. I'll probably get cut off soon. Oh, you know what? I always forget to say at the end of these. Please like and subscribe. Oh, I should have a sound effect for that, oh, shouldn't I? Oh gosh, you should. Oh, no. Next like time. and subscribe. Okay. Bing. Yeah. Oh gosh. Okay. Well, in a couple of weeks, I'm pretty confident there will be a sound effect for that. Um, but yes, yeah, sometimes, you know, um, if people like and subscribe on here, I think there's the possibility we might earn 25p a month from uh, YouTube. What should we spend that on, Christopher? Uh, jingles. <laughs> um, but yes, please like and, su like and subscribe, because I was going to say, if you don't follow me on social media, I think if you like and subscribe, it might tell you next time I'm on and what I'm doing. I think that's how it works. Isn't it? Just... Barbara on Facebook, Barbara Davidson, seemed to think you were going to be doing buttons today. I don't know why. Buttons? Buttons. buttons. What sort of buttons? I don't know. Buttons. Buttons. And she said, in... could you do buttons another day? Do you mean brooches, Barbara? I don't know. Are you from the States, Barbara? Who knows? Or are you from the UK? Quickly type back. I don't know. <laughs> don't no, they call... No. Buttons don't they... are badges, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, badges. That's it. They call badges buttons in the u.s Strange people. i don't know what was i what do you know what you could easily make a button or a badge from the felt with the bullion rose on it oh do you know what i forgot to show you how to do the leaves sorry um, those are simply oh. just straight stitches i'm just looking down at this now thinking you want to do the leaves they're literally just straight stitches for the leaves in green um yes but you could easily do a, a, a brooch couldn't you instead um, and fix it round something, pin it on. That would be very, very nice. Uh, apparently, Barbara says it was posted on WI Wanderers. Was whatever. it really? Yeah. 
Oh gosh, I'm so sorry if you've been misled, but I've never said that I was doing brooches. I've always said that I was doing Mexican hanging hearts. However, oh however, um, do you know what? If you've got the kit, you'd have enough stuff left over to make some little badges and brooches from this. So, um, but she's very happy because it's brought her to the site and she's watching and I think Good. she's enjoying Thank herself. Thank you so much, Barbara. Claire Bosworth on Facebook says, have you any needle threaders in stock and clamps for embroidery rings? Yes. Oh, yes, yes. We've got loads of these, loads of clamps. I think you need to go on the website, needlework, stitching accessories or something like that got loads of hoop, loads of clamps they're really good actually because they just clamp onto the edge of the table there's some that you can buy that you sit on I'm not sure if we've got any of those I'm not sure that we do we might and then there's others that you clamp to the, the edge of the table which are the great ones I think and then they have a little um, a, um, screw where you can stick your hoop in and you therefore can use any size of hoop um, and there are some that have fixed sized hoops as well. But I think it's quite good to get the one where you can stick any hoop in and then you can keep your fabric taut and use both hands. But obviously draw the shape of the heart on first. Otherwise it might all be, end up a bit random. Uh, so definitely draw your shape on first, then stitch it if you're going to use the embroidery hoop. Yes, now the threaders, I'm, I'm pretty confident we've still got quite a lot of these in stock. Mine's now gone AWOL. There it is. Um, they, where would they be? I think they're still under new, actually, on our website. But again, they may be under stitching accessories. Invaluable little thing, that is. And it's quite sort of sturdy. More st you know those really, really cheap needle threaders? It's much, much more sturdy than that. Hence the increased price, I think. But yeah, really, really good uh, to have and very useful. And you do get the yarn darners in with the kit as well, these great needles that I like to use a lot. Not that I do any yarning, uh, darning with them, I just do um, stitching with them mostly and sewing things together. Can, but you, can you do darning? Yes. Oh, darning's very in, darling. Is it? Not Are you that? good at it? <laughs> I'm not going to answer that question. I'm not darning your socks. Oh. If that's what you're about All to right. ask me. Okay. But um, creative darning of sweaters and jumpers is, is very in at the moment. Anyway, that's a whole other thing. Look, I'm going and I'll see you in a couple of weeks' time unless there's any further questions, are there? Uh, no, not that I can see. All right, one last sound effect before we go, Chris. You I haven't can got any which. left. Oh, oh I can choose you? anything. You can choose anything. one out of the ones that what, you can Out used. of all my favourite yes, ones. Yes, go on then, quickly, because okay, then. we're going now. I like this one, I'm okay, sorry. Go on then. Give away. Give away. This is the giveaway. Wave your giveaway around, Julian. Go on. But only to tomorrow is this giveaway. All right, folks. Have a lovely rest of the weekend. Stay well and enjoy the snow if you're in the UK. And I will see you in a couple of weeks' time. Cheery bye. It's chilly in It's chilly in It's chilly in It's chilly in It's chilly in